I've got an affirmation for you. You ready? Repeat after me. I am a magical being using the power of my imagination to create the life that I desire to live. You feel that warmthness, that tingling sensation inside of you? <laughs> That's the magic right there. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if this is your first time here, hey. I am Shalice Nelson, a licensed psychotherapist who helps people tap into the power of creativity within their healing process. And this channel here is all things creativity, from explaining the science behind creativity to providing you all with creative DIYs and mindfulness activities to enhance your creative wellness and even sharing glimpses of my own creative processes and experiences. I'm happy to have you here. So, come here real quick. Come on. I don't know how to zoom in yet in the editing process. She learned how to zoom in and nothing was the same. But, <laughs> give me a hug. It means a lot to a girl like me for you to watch these videos. I be in the library. Yes, I said be. Reading journal articles and gathering the research with the intention to provide you all with enriching content. So if you find this content enjoyable and beneficial to you, please be sure to subscribe and turn those notifications on so that you can be aware of when some scientific creative heat is coming your way. Are you ready to get nerdy? Today we are talking about the intersection between mindfulness and imagination and why it might help you to enhance your creative abilities. And the first step to being creative is using your imagination, baby. Shakti Gawain defines imagination as the ability to produce an idea, a mental picture, or a feeling sense of something. And there are two different forms of imagination. We have external or plastic imagination and internal or emotional imagination. Plastic imagination is the use of external products, things outside of you, to support you in creating a product. So, for example, let's use this mug here. If we were to imagine all the different ways in which it could be used, that. It's plastic imagination. Emotional imagination is a process of developing rules for construction. So let's say you were planning to have a banging party. You start thinking about what music you're going to play, who to invite, what food's going to be there, what the ambiance is going to be like. But is a way of you using your emotional imagination. In this video, our focus is on emotional imagination because that right there is your magical superpower. Dr. Carlo Magno, an educational psychologist once stated, creativity is a product of an executed imagination. Mm. Let that sit for a minute. That was good to me. That was good to y'all? You better put that on a post-it note or something. And that just goes to share how transformative our creative abilities through imagination can be. You can use the power of imagination to create the life that you desire. And what if I told you that every single day you tap into the power of your imagination? The clothes that you have on right now, did you envision yourself in them before you put them on? Or the last meal that you ate? Did you imagine the process of what it would take to get the food on the plate? Did you imagine how good it would taste? Those are all different ways in which we utilize our imagination on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Oftentimes, the way we use our imagination on a daily basis doesn't serve us as well as it could be. Especially if we're dealing with monsters, you know, anxiety or depression or self-doubt, that can lend to us experiencing more distressing than relaxing or calming thoughts. So let's use, for example, you have an opportunity of a lifetime. How might your imagination serve you? You can go in one direction where you think like, wow, this is great. And you think of all the different ways in which you're gonna execute it, show up and kill it. Or you can think about all the ways in which this opportunity can go completely wrong. That is the power of our imagination and the power of our thoughts. Can you see how your thoughts can lend you to one direction or another? And this is where guided imagery comes into play. Guided imagery, also known as visualization, is a mindfulness technique which encourages us to utilize our imagination to generate a different physiological response or emotion than what we feel in the current moment. Guided imagery is a lot like going on a free vacation. I mean, your feet aren't really in the sand, but you can close your eyes and move your feet as if your feet really were in the sand. So, that might work until you open your eyes, but that might work. Guided imagery, unlike meditation, fosters focused thought and has the intention to elicit an emotional response. It is an active process which encourages the use of all of your senses. Studies have shown that guided imagery boosts those feel-good neurotransmitters like oxytocin, dopamine, and serotonin, which in turn leads to you building immunity, enhances performance, and reduces stress and negative thoughts. I mean, you practice guided imagery and you are built for tough in a life of softness. Mm, you like that? Because I like that. If you tweet it, make sure you give me my prop. Tips to engage in guided imagery. Number one, ensure that you are in a safe space where you feel comfortable and won't be disturbed. I mean, for me, I can envision myself right now on a beach in Zanzibar, dancing on a boat, eating good food. And if my phone rang, I'd be really mad. You don't need anything killing your vibe. Two, carve out the time to really engage in this practice. Where meditation can be something that you can use to fill in blank spots within your day, Guided imagery is more so of an intentional process that you have to be fully present with. It's gonna be hard imagining whatever you're being led to envision when you're focused on what you need to do next. Three, try your best to have pen and paper nearby. And immediately after you finish, take time to write down what that experience was like so that you can begin to develop a plan on how to implement it into real life. As much as I love guided imagery, I have to note that it's not built for everyone. For those who are in the midst of experiencing intense intrusive thoughts at a given moment, this exercise may not help you in reducing those thoughts as quickly as you'd like to. And for those who have experienced trauma where the process of closing your eyes may be very challenging, there may be other methods of mindfulness that are better suited for you. And I'm going to provide you with some of that soon, too. Well, Miss Stevie J hands, are you ready to engage in a guided imagery activity? Well, the following experience was inspired by a training I took with Dr. Dawn Elise Snipes. To grant you an opportunity to know what it feels like, I'd like for you to get into a place that you feel safe and comfortable. Close your eyes and grow awareness in your breath. Continue to breathe your normal breathing pattern, paying attention to how your body shifts as each breath enters and releases.
Now, I want you to think back to a time where you felt your most happiest self. This may be a memory from your childhood, five years ago, or maybe even yesterday. What's the environment that you see your happiest self in? Could this be a beach? A loved one's home? Maybe walking down the street? What's the scent in the air? Possibly you smell the delicious meal you prepared. Or is it the perfume or cologne of someone you adore? Is there a scent of the ocean breeze as you envision yourself in one of the happiest moments of your lifetime? Take note of what the different emotions you feel right now are. What type of sensation does that create in your body? As you prepare to open your eyes, take time to think about how you can savor the feelings you are experiencing right now. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. So, what was that experience like? Well, before you tell me, pause this video, go write it down, and then come back. If you found it to be refreshing, enjoyable, or creatively inspiring to you, then please ensure that you stay tuned to my Creative Flow series, which is all things mindfulness to help you on your creative journey. And if you go and look right now, I just dropped some heat for you to continue on with the practice. So go check that out. I'm so grateful for you for rocking with me. And if you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And you can go tell somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody about this so that they can learn more about creative wellness too. Before I head out, please be sure to check the description box below where credit is given to all the creatives who provided me with the information and knowledge to develop this content here. Be mindful and I'll see you soon. Why do I always do that? I don't know why I always got to do peace.